All right, so today, today is April 20th, 2022, and we're one session away, which is tomorrow, the 21st. Uh, this is the 20th out of 21 fasting workout of April. Hope you guys are working out also. Today, word phrase I'm gonna say on this video is, I am. I am capable of exercising. I'm capable of having energy. I am enthusiastic. And uh, I am gonna work out. Cause, you know, sometimes the mind play tricks. Today, it was just trying to put so much burden on. Don't work out today. Stay inside. Today's not your day. It's just lots of low vibration words saying to my talk to myself so um i know there's a saying that goes around that uh you know sometimes you could be a prisoner of your own mind uh i've been hearing that you know quite a few times man and it's very serious there's nothing holding me back to go exercise there's nothing holding me back to say hey i am ready and uh, i'm just glad that i am here you know because Whatever that was earlier was not needed. So we're doing 20 reps, everything. Uh, same thing on the rip right, 10. Hold for 10 seconds. And what they call it, uh, we're doing the reps, 10 reps all the way down. I was able to get all the way down to five. Hope I can get all the way down to four today. Um, the audio book, Shahzad Ali, um, Black Man's Guide to Understand a Black Woman. It's been very informative. Once again, it doesn't have to be 100% everything that needs to transpire in a relationship, but at least about 70, 80% of the information that say, you know what, let me give this a different try. Let me give it a different thought, you know, and see how can we have healthier relationships in our community? How can we be able to talk uh, on the hard topics, the topics that are like, I don't want to hear it, it's too tough to talk about. Sometimes you just have to find a way to push through those topics so everybody could someone be on the same page or understand and comprehend on the information. So uh, with that being said, let's get into the exercise. 20 reps, everything. Uh, we got one more session, which is tomorrow. Hopefully the weather holds up. It's been uh, passing showers. So I'm just hoping that tomorrow holds up for what it is. All right, let's get started. If, to defend himself, the black man develops a feminine style of sparring with a black woman and tries to go blow for blow with her in insults, bickering, and name calling, the woman will tell her family and friends that he just bitches all the time. She refers to his participation as bitching because she knows her kind of talk is indicative to the female gender only. She believes it to be a natural part of her nature and wants him to believe that too. He should not. If the black man loses his cool under pressure and responds by flinging a string of colorful metaphors, curse words, at her, she complains that he talks to me like a dog. The fact that she is the one acting like an animal never comes up. Sometimes the black man grows to respond to everything she says in a harsh rebuttal tone. He becomes accustomed to the rough talk and uses it as frequently as she. This is wrong. It only convinces the black woman that he can't handle her, so he has joined her. She will drag him under the earth if he allows it. When a black man falls for a black woman and begins to demonstrate that he loves her more than he loves himself, she recognizes this as a ripe stage for her to really let it rip. The more he professes his love, the worse she will treat him. The more he tries to give her, the more she will demand. And the more he tries to bed her down, the more she rejects his overtures. The harder he tries to please her, the more critical she is of his efforts. 
This is a perfect example that she does not know what to do when put in a position to rule the black man. When she is allowed to rule, she thinks the black man must be weak or crazy or both. She cannot handle it. She abuses him instead of progressively enjoying him more. And the time is not far off when she will be looking for another man. Sometimes the black woman speaks kindly to the black man or does nice things for him for the wrong reason. Sometimes her reason is just to make sure that he does not fall victim to the attentions of another woman. So she acts out the duties of being a good woman. So her man can't use that as a reason to, quote, fool around. So she goes through the motions so she can never be charged with not holding up her end, or so she thinks. But true caring and affection cannot be faked. If there is no love and good spirit put into the care, it becomes dry and sterile, bland and mechanical. The black woman must be made to understand that the black man must first feel good about himself and that she should help the black man to feel good about himself when he is with her. That means that when the black man is happy with a black woman, it does not necessarily mean he is happy with her physical affection or exciting personality as much as with how she makes him feel about himself. He will reciprocate. When the black man is pleased with himself and feels good about himself, his days are happy and he is radiant. He is eager to go off to work and eager to come home at night. In general, he is more productive. This is called satisfaction. Feeling good mentally, emotionally, and physically creates its own natural high. An elevation to peace and freedom, and confidence, and courage. Anything can be accomplished. All of this is part of the black woman's responsibility to herself. The blessings she will receive from making her black man feel good about himself are unlimited. While she has her own ideas about what the black man should do to make her happy, she would be much wiser if she gave the black man a chance to express his ideas about what will make her happy. A black man can look at his woman and decide what she needs. Black women have been known to treat the black man so badly and to talk to him in such a destructive way that he becomes confused and angry and is literally driven to drink or use drugs. She will prod him with her electrical shock tongue until she pushes him over the edge into some deep, dark cavern of despair. When she tells her friends about his condition, they all agree that he got what he deserves for letting her do it to him. It is their preconceived notion that if a black man resigns himself to obeying the black woman to the point of self-debasement, he deserves whatever hell awaits him. This is a cruel and unusual punishment that he earns as a reward for having the kind of overwhelming adoration of the black woman that she claims she wants. She only wants it until she gets it, and then she reverts to a destroyer. She will lead him into a trap by plotting to do everything she can to make him fall in love with her. She will make him feel better than he has ever felt in his entire life. At least she makes him think he does. She will make him totally dependent upon her affections and attentions. She will set him up for the fall. It's a game to her to see if she can make or break him. As the game progresses, she steps up her plan to debase him and sometimes the change of tide is so powerful in his life that he can't concentrate enough to work, eat, sleep, or behave normally. She literally drives him crazy. He cannot live with her and cannot live without her. The more love, the more pain, and she heaps it by the shovelful. 
This is a dangerous game the black woman plays because sometimes if the man cannot handle it emotionally, he may decide to kill her. Sometimes he does. When he reaches his breaking point and becomes threatening, she scurries back in place and claims she doesn't know what's wrong with him. She accomplishes these same deeds using jealousy, sex, or rebellion. While he explodes, she implodes, and she hates herself for not being able to control herself. Therefore, the black man should never allow his love for the black woman to surpass his love for himself. This is not being selfish. It is a raw necessity if he intends to survive his relationship with a black woman. He must never let her ego get out of control to the point where she becomes the main focus in the relationship. The black man must always be the main focus of the relationship. This does not mean that the black woman's needs should not be met, nor that she is unimportant, but she is number two and the black man is number one. The black man being number one and the black woman being number two is another absolute law of nature. The black man was created first, he has seniority, and the black woman was created second. He is first, she is second. The black man is the beginning and all others come from him. Everyone on earth knows this except the black woman. The only reason the black woman rejects the idea that the black man is first is because she does not think that he deserves to be treated good. If examined, she does not really know the details of why she does not want him on top. All she knows is that she doesn't want him telling her what to do. She already knows that try as she may, she cannot control the black man. Her frustration is that no matter how hard she tries, she cannot force the black man into the orderly pattern mold she outlines for him. The black man, even in his disorganized state, cannot be controlled. He is not controllable. This is different from being out of control. This means he is in control of himself. Others who have tried to control him momentarily meet with the same frustration as the black woman. Failure. The black woman, like America, is afraid of anything she can't control. The black man's chromosomes evidently are programmed to rule and be in control. So he cannot submit to being controlled forever by inferior, unqualified beings. Why scientists around the globe know this? Infrequently, the black woman comes up with a good idea or renders some sensible advice to the black man. Whether or not he accepts it depends on how she brings it to him. If she does it as non-insulting, respectful, the black man is able to hear her and take her comments under consideration. If she delivers the information in the wrong tone of voice, the man rejects it and her. He must be careful in accepting instructions or advice from the black woman because she is easily confused and will decide that he can't make it unless she tells him what to do. Making recommendations is her insidious way of gaining control in a relationship. If the black woman is sincere in her affections and is genuinely trying to help the black man, he will be able to accept what she says and implement it into their lives for wider success. Of course, when the black woman helps the black man develop and reach his desired potential, she experiences fear that he will outgrow her and leave her for another woman. She does not trust his motives when he wants to expand. When he says, I'm doing this for us, she is not sure which us he is talking about. She may remind him about what she has helped him do and that he would not have been able to do it if it were not for her. She is ever seeking opportunities to get the black man to bow down and worship her for being her wonderful self. When she accomplishes something free of ulterior motive, her man will recognize this and pile on the accolades. But if her idea is anything but clean, then he shouldn't get too excited. She has heard stories of women who help their men succeed and then he leaves them. So she is afraid this will happen to her. If she behaves right 
and does not create problems or become combative, she will be well rewarded for her trust. She will be taken care of and loved, and her children will be fathered and become heir to the black man's accomplishments. This is how black legacies are made. Another reason the black woman fails in her confrontations with the black man is because she attempts to use the white woman's analysis and social priorities as her mentor regarding how she should get along with the black man. This is wrong. White American issues are completely different from black American issues. The white race understands the necessity for open forum discussion of their relationship problems. Blacks are sensitive about the defects in black life and fly into a tizzy at the mere mention of interpersonal problems indigenous to ex-slaves. This refusal to acknowledge the nitty-gritty problems have resulted in them being ignored and assumed unimportant. Even worse, if left the black woman and the black man to devise their own solutions, blacks have no published scholastic analogies about how the black man and the black woman should get along. The inside story of life between black man and black woman has been tiptoed around as if it were a time bomb. These problems exist and they are monumental. They hold the key to the black man and the black woman's personal success. A problem is only a question. Any problem can be broken into a mathematical equation to which a formula is applied. Let's go. Let's go. Throughout these 21 days or 20 days right now, I only missed three days. So, I'm very excited right now. 28th day completed. One more day to go out this. Another 21 day fasting for April 2022. Um, definitely in imperfection into perfection. Practice makes perfect. Uh, that rip right, was, I was able to get it down to uh, the five, hold it for five seconds and do the reps. It is a burn. Right here. All around here. Burn. And in the back too. Um, so it's definitely a plus. Uh, I'm gonna keep that going into May. So look forward to doing that again. Uh, the moment I could be able to do 20, no, 10. 10 second count, 10 reps, all the way down to one second count, one rep. That's a plus, definitely. Um, complete 180 today. Was not in the mood to work out at all. Talked down on myself several times. It really felt like a burden today. And uh, to be in a position just to walk and jog, that was done, you know. It was been pretty windy down here in South Florida, so it's like it's gonna rain. It's not gonna rain, and then be able to work out here tonight. You know, it just it's just amazing feeling. Uh, Shahzad Ali, I want to just say a special thanks to her. If I ever get a chance to talk to her, or if she ever get a chance to hear my voice, I just want to say thank you for writing a book like this. I uh, don't know when it was established, uh, but it was established during my time, which, or it's being uh, coming to the surface during my time, you know, and I'm just applauded by the information that she's sharing. Uh, like I said, she's not that, the audio book, she don't, she don't know your name. She don't know what city you're from, what's your whole, whole background, but it's just a collective of that type of energy where, you know, I would say good men out there, I can speak for myself also, good men out there are 
doing their best to have a healthy relationship, successful relationship. Um, and sometimes some of the things that we ask for in a relationship, it's almost like we're being devalued in what we're saying, what needs to get done, things like that. You know, I don't know what I could fit in based on the history that is shared to me, like, you know, how men go out there fight for war and, you know, they go out there in the workforce and, you know, uh, you know, you just come home. You really want to come home to peace. You want to go fight war. You know, you want to come home not to racism, you know, for the veterans out there that fought war and they come back to racism or they come back to gun violence or, you know, whatever craziness they may be experiencing when you serve the country. Uh, thanks for those that do serve the country. Uh, and for the hardworking men out there that honestly are working, you know, uh, and doing what it takes to the list of things to provide and everything else to be there for a family and then still get hit with the whatever BS, potentially, uh, child support, you know, get hit with a child support, get hit like, oh, uh, you're not making me, you're not, she's not happy no more, so she's out. Or, you know, he lost his job, so she's out, she's gone. Or, um, as soon as the kids were created by both of you guys, a man and a woman, was created, brought to this world, she's out. You know, she's not even worrying about the man no more. It's, it's more like she just focused on the kids. So, I, what I heard on, on, a, on a YouTube short was, uh, I think it was Chris Rock was saying that how, you know, the animals could get unconditional love. Uh, the baby, the, the kids could get unconditional love. The woman could get unconditional love. And then it's like, it only kind of gears to like, okay, what about the man? seems like the man uh, gets conditioned uh, type of love, you know, based on what he does and his status, that's, it depends how much love he's going to receive. Um, it's really not unconditional. Uh, stigma is what comes to my mind because once again, I just mentioned a few minutes ago, a few seconds ago that, you know, there are good men out there and, and it should just be it can potentially just be a natural, unconditional love thing, man. Uh, for, I'm trying to see if there's an example. It's like, if the label of not having a boyfriend, girlfriend wasn't there, or the label of not being husband and wife, as human beings, you know, if you see a man that's working hard, you know, hey, man, you're doing great. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure men give other men props on their work and everything else or if they're slacking hey you know uh try to cheer them up or get them into a mindset that gets them going uh only i'm speaking from a man perspective or same thing with a with a woman you know what i mean don't really matter the race i should say but just as a woman if you see someone that's doing a great job or whatever the case may be, or you just speak life into her, she's going through a down situation, just naturally, unconditionally doing that. Not being in the friend zone, just saying, hey, this is who I am. I care about people around me, men or women, and I have a saying, I have a saying within myself, one of my morals and principles is, I wanna see everybody win. I wanna see everybody win. So, uh, just to bring it back to the audio book, it's just, you know, are we, are we seeing, is there opportunity to see something that's not right, know it's not right, and just be able to speak up, communicate it through, and look at things at different perspectives for a better outcome, you know? So, thanks for listening. If you stay to the end of this video, thank you for listening. Today was definitely a challenge, challenge my peace day.
<laughs> my peace was challenged today. You know, I went quite a few days like, oh yeah, this is a peaceful day. And tomorrow's gonna be peaceful. And today it was like, I'm gonna challenge you. How peaceful can you be today? And it seems like the, the peace, the love won. Um, I'm very thankful and grateful for that. So tomorrow's gonna be a peaceful day. It is. We don't know the outcome, of course, but just know it's gonna be a peaceful day. So with that being said, you guys take care.